What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Today is a very exciting day. I'm officially starting on my project that's flying at Balls, Black Rock, Nevada here in just a little over a month and a half, I believe, on an N1000 that's, well, I don't know. I keep saying 50,000 feet. That would be cool, but I don't know if it's actually going to get there. It's kind of a tough motor to sim because of uh, the base bleed you get with the flame remaining there, even the motor is technically not burning anymore. Uh, you know, we'll see what we get. At any rate, it's an all carbon fiber, four inch minimum diameter rocket that should be going a little north of Mach 2, and it's going to go very, very high. And today we're going to be assembling the motor for it. Assembling the motor isn't where you'd usually start for a rocket, but because I'm doing this a similar way that I did my three inch JB weld rocket, if you want to go check that video out, it's up there. Um, I need to know the overall motor length with the gap on the rear closure. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about here, I'll show you in a little bit. Aerotech motors typically have a little bit of a gap where you can't close the rear closure all the way. And I need to know exactly how long everything's going to be with the coupler sitting on top of the motor because that dictates how much I can cut away of the tube and I'm trying to make it as short as I possibly can so we can squeeze as much altitude out of it as possible. I wanted to make this video because this motor is a little bit different to build. The N1000, M685, and M650 all require you to glue the grain faces together. And the N1000 has you do it in pairs. I've never built an N1000 before, but I have built an M650, so I have a little bit of an idea of what's going on, but basically, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it and in the process also doing it for the first time. So hopefully I don't mess anything up. If you're coming here to see how to build an N1000, make sure you have a one inch wooden dowel. I'm going to cut it to voice over me and I'm going to take you guys over to the workbench and we're going to start putting my N1000 together. First we'll handle the run -a mill motor assembly stuff like greasing the o-rings, assembling the smoke charge assembly. While we're here we'll grease the threads on the forward and rear closures and preemptively put the o-ring on the forward seal disc. Now this is where grain face bonding motors depart from the standard though. Not every motor that requires grain face bonding uses this geometry but the N1000 uses an offset core. This type of motor is often referred to as a moon burner because the grain geometry makes for a burn pattern that resembles a crescent moon or that it burns so long you'll get to the moon depending on who you ask. In essence though, with grain face bonding, the idea here is to turn all of the propellant grains into one big one by way of, in this case, 30 minute hobby epoxy. On this motor, the bottom grain is chamfered to make inserting the igniter a bit easier, so we ensure we start with that one and place it face down on the table. This is going to be the nozzle end, as you might have assumed from that last statement, so we don't want to glue it to anything. The Aerotech instructions dictate that you should then glue the grains in pairs of two in visual alignment and allow them to cure completely before moving forward, so that's what I did. However, I did also use a one inch wooden dowel to align the cores before the epoxy cured. The dowel is recommended for use in the next step, but I wanted to go ahead and use it now to ensure everything is aligned too because this motor is really expensive and I don't want to mess anything up. Once those three pairs of grains are cured, in the case of the N1000 at least, obviously your grain count is going to vary depending on what motor you're putting together. All that's left to do is glue them together as we're inserting them into the liner. For this, I had Shane, or as you may know him, Postart, shoot this sequence so I could explain it in real time. Now, it is worth remembering that not all grain face bonding motors are exactly the same or like this N1000 necessarily. So ensure that if you're using this video as a reference, you're just using it for the gluing procedure and make sure you follow the instructions provided with your rocket motor, please. All right, we got Shane on the camera. Go buy stuff from hprtools.com. First, we're going to make sure these are still going to go through the liner. They've been curing for two hours, something like that. It's 30 minute epoxy, so it should be more than good. All the cores are still lined up. It looks good. Everything seems to be flowing pretty well through the liner. And that's good news. Okay. It's very hot in our house. i put this bag over here. So I'm going to keep this batch of epoxy on ice because I don't want it to flash cure. However, the middle two grains have to have epoxy on both ends when they go in. So 
Um, I don't want it to flash cure and have epoxy sitting on the top of that grain starting to cure while I'm trying to put the last pair in. So we're gonna do another big batch and we are off to the races. I'm gonna look at the instructions one more time to make sure I understand what's going on. Okay, we also have this O-ring, which is a different O-ring than most reloads have. This fits inside the liner. This goes between the nozzle and your bottom chamfered grain. It's just a little bit of a spacer so you can get the uh, igniter in a little bit easier. The M685 does not have that, the M650 does. I have heard of folks forgetting to put that O-ring in. Just heard of it. I have heard that all it is is a spacer so you can get the igniter in. And I have heard that your Honest John will still fly fine, or any rocket that you put it in for that matter. But we'll just make sure we get it in. All right, another pro tip if you're worried about flash curing is to keep it as thin as possible. So I'm gonna keep it spread out in this container as much as possible. And then like I said, we're gonna put it on top of that ice that I've got over there. Hopefully that'll keep us golden. So chamfer grain goes on the bottom. So that's the first one we're gonna worry about. I wanna make sure I get an adequate amount of epoxy on this top grain here or I guess rather the second grain, but I wanna make sure I'm not pumping a bunch into the core as we discussed earlier. And I want to make sure that I don't have a bunch of overrun just in case we do run into a flash curing situation. I really, really don't want it glued into the liner in the wrong spot because you know, then I ruin a $1,500 rocket motor which nobody wants on their permanent record. And you know me, if I did it, it would stay on the channel. Um, there's a little bit there. Let me get a paper towel. All hey, they can still hear me, because I have the mic on. Hey, everybody. How'd you like the look of those propellant grains? All right. All right, folks, where the rubber meets the road, let me make sure we get this edge here. I'm not exactly renowned for my precision, so uh, we're wasting time either way. So I guess get busy doing or get busy dying. Okay. Slide the liner over these two. Careful. Nozzle spacer O-ring goes in, chamfer grain on the bottom. Nozzle goes in, we set it on the nozzle. Then we knock it over, right? Yep. <laughs> It says to just drop it in and then use the dowel to align it. But the way I did it with the M685 was I got this guy in there. I'm not panicking, you're panicking. Now, the goal isn't to glue it into the liner, but I have to suspect in a lot of cases, that's just kind of what happens. As will probably be the case here. Shout out cameraman Shane. 
This is the part I don't love where it's like, yeah, just drop them on in there. Okay. And then this side. That is getting thick fast. Yeah. It'll be okay. How long has it been according to the camera? Uh, 10 minutes. Wow, really? Yeah. That sucks. It's gonna be all right. Yeah. It's starting to get thick fast. It is still like 80 degrees in the house. California energy prices, folks. And we are out of time. Try and make sure everything's all aligned there. I just want to make sure I'm not going to leave any epoxy in the top of the liner because I don't want to glue my seal disc in. Those are quite expensive in 98 millimeter. Still goes in and out of the core easily, which tells me we're aligned well. Not a lot of epoxy on the dowel, which tells me I didn't have a lot of epoxy in the core, which is great. Dude, I'm so excited about this motor. This is yeah. one of my favorite motors. I've never flown one, largely because they're really expensive, but also because I've been scared of this process on a motor of this scale. These grains are like $100 a piece or something like that. I'm gonna wipe the outside of the liner. I did touch it with a little bit of epoxy. It'd be real hard to get it glued into the case, but yeah. I wouldn't call it impossible, <laughs> so. Now, here's the other thing. Uh, N1000s have been known to burn through the liner and blister cases. So Aerotech actually tells you to get very liberal with the grease up at the top after you get your seal disc on, which you just saw me put on. So I'm gonna glove up. Even though my hands are a little bit wet, this is going to be a 20 minute portion of this video. Mm -hmm. Most of the motors that I build, if I'm concerned about a burn through, I go really heavy with the grease on the entire liner. Um, Are you going to go with the Cosden grease? I don't have any. The Dow 111. Yeah. I've got the wheel bearing grease. Mm but this should be fine. You can buy this at Harbor Freight, by the way, this super lube. And basically, my plan since this motor got delivered has been to put as much grease on it as I can and still put the case over it. So I might have to time lapse this portion. Okay, this brand new 9815 360, courtesy of our friends over at Great Western Buildings. Oh, I'm loving that. Oh. Every square inch of this thing is filled with grease. Dude, you need to build like a J350. There's enough grease right there to do it. Against the seal disc. I should've got more paper towels, honestly. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, no. 
wipe everything down. Honestly, I was expecting a much bigger gap on this rear closure. I can't hold on to it because it's covered in grease. <laughs> just want to make sure everything's tight. All right, I just checked the mic pack actually because I accidentally left it recording. So the epoxy is pretty much cured and it's been 28 minutes since I started recording. So actually keeping it on the ice kept it right around 30 minutes. Boy, 30 minutes does not feel like enough time when the motor costs as much as that. But uh, it's good, it's all together. Uh, high key, I took it back apart and just took the nozzle out and ran the dowel through it one more time after we laid it on its side. I was suddenly paranoid that it somehow got out of alignment but everything's good. It's all together. We have an N1000 and now we need a rocket. Thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. You guys helped make this all possible. Thank you to Great Western Buildings and Wildman Rocketry for making this particular project possible. I'm going to try and do this build in sort of longer bits and pieces of a series, if not just one long video for the whole build and then a video for the launch. I haven't decided exactly yet, but throughout the entire build, I will be posting behind the scenes pictures and clips and all this good stuff on patreon.com slash rocket vlogs and, and the channel membership section. If you press the join button below and uh, you'd be helping the channel out a lot. If you want to check those things out, if you can't afford to, you just don't want to give me your money. That's fine. I'm just glad you're here pressing the like button and making sure you're subscribed with the notifications on helps a lot more than you know. The other big thing is watching the whole video and you're at the end. So thank you. You guys rule. Let's feed the YouTube algorithm together. Whew. My name is Braden Carlson. You just watched a Rocket Vlogs video. Follow me on Instagram at BigB1011. If you like car stuff, check out RevReflection.com. It is my website. And what else, Shane? TikTok. <sighs> oh yeah, Braden Carlson 6 on TikTok. Oh, and... RocketVlogs.com, get your Airfest 30 Punisher and Arcus merch while you still can. And for those of you that are hanging out long enough, use the discount code Airfest30 at RocketVlogs.square.site for 50% off. That's 5-0, half off any stickers you order from RocketVlogs.square.site. Uh, please don't order any of the USB drive videos. I'm out of USB drives right now, and that whole thing is just a bit more of an ordeal than I need to mess with right now we're it's kind of cracking down we got like less than 90 days until that n1000 is supposed to go 50,000 feet thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time peace <laughs> <laughs>